All right, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to connect together the two main ideas from the unit circle. So maybe you recall from a couple videos ago that the unit circle, which is really all the points anywhere on the outside of this circle in red, but we are kind of more interested in some sense in the points that are specified in green and blue. And for each of these points, we have both the angle in degrees and radians that terminates at this point and their X and Y coordinates. In this video, I want to tie together those concepts with some functions. And so with functions, you're thinking inputs and outputs again. And you might wonder how in the world that's ever going to connect to the unit circle. And understanding that will be key for the rest of this class because the rest of this class deals with trig functions. And trig functions are exactly those functions that take in different angles. And those angles can be specified in either degrees or radians. It doesn't matter. And they kick out either the x coordinate or the y coordinate or some combination thereof of the points on the unit circle that correspond with those angles. So what am I talking about? Well, in this section, we're only going to see two functions, the sine function and the cosine function, which are typically abbreviated SIN and COS. And all the sine function does is it's one of these trig functions, and it takes in angles, and it spits out the Y coordinate of the point on the unit circle with that angle. So a question might look like this. The sine function, I'm putting 45 degrees. I'm putting an angle into that function. And what should come out of this function is the y coordinate, because sine will always correspond with y, of the point on the unit circle that terminates at 45 degrees. Coming back to my unit circle here, it's this point that terminates at 45 degrees, and its y coordinate is this square root of 2 over 2. Therefore, the sine of 45 degrees is just the square root of 2 over 2. What about the sine of 210 degrees? Well, again, referring back to my unit circle, maybe I remember that 210 degrees is talking about this point down here, and sine always refers to the y coordinate, so the answer to this sine of 210 degrees would be negative 1 half. This function would kick out negative 1 half when someone puts 210 into it. All the sine function does is it kicks out the y coordinate on the unit circle of the point with that angle. That angle doesn't have to be given in degrees. Somebody could just as easily ask you for the sine of pi over 6. And then you come back over here, think pi over 6 is talking about this point. Its y coordinate is 1 half. Thus, the sine of pi over 6 is just a half. OK, that's sine. But what about cosine? What about the other function? What if I asked you for the cosine of, I don't know, 180 degrees? Well, again, you refer back to your unit circle. I'm getting kind of sick of scrolling up and down. And you come over to 180 degrees here, and what you need to know about cosine is cosine always refers to the x-coordinate. So while the sine of 180 degrees would be this 0, the cosine of 180 degrees is this negative 1 right here. By the same logic, I could figure out the cosine of pi over 6. Pi over 6, we already looked at that point. We figured out because the sine of pi over 6 equals 1 half that the y-coordinate of that point is equal to 1 half. The x-coordinate, that's going to be root 3 over 2. Understanding sine and cosine is as simple as just understanding that sine is always referring to the y-coordinate on the unit circle, and cosine is always referring to the x-coordinate on the unit circle. A couple minor things. We want to extend these functions sine and cosine so that they work for angles that are not between 0 and 360 degrees. So for example, I want to be able to ask you about the cosine of maybe 450 degrees. And you're like, oh, that's problematic. I don't see 450 degrees anywhere on this unit circle. However, back in 5.1, I learned how to find coterminal angles. And I learned that an angle of 90 degrees is coterminal with an angle of 450 degrees. So if 450 degrees is really referring to this same point that 90 degrees is referring to. So if I want to know the cosine of 450 degrees, it's the same as the cosine of 90 degrees. It's the x coordinate of this point, which is just equal to 0. What about the cosine of negative pi over 4? Well, same problem. Negative pi over 4 is not on our unit circle, but it's coterminal with the point that's on our unit circle. Negative pi over 4 is coterminal with positive 7 pi over 4. You can either think about pi over 4 is kind of traveling halfway across one of these quadrants, but if I go in the negative direction, I'd be talking about this point down here. Or you could say negative pi over 4, that's not in between 0 and 2 pi, so I have to add 2 pi to it. And when I add 2 pi to negative pi over 4, it gets me to 7 pi over 4. One way or another, you figure out that negative pi over 4 is coterminal with 7 pi over 4. So it's referring to this point right here. And since the question was about the x coordinate, the cosine of negative pi over 4, my answer is just going to be the square root of 2 over 2. The big takeaway is that the sine function is just asking for the y coordinate of the point on the unit circle that terminates at angle t. Similarly, the cosine of t would be asking for the x coordinate of the point on the unit circle terminating at angle t. Often we're interested in these 16 special points that we memorized off the unit circle. But it's worth pointing out that the questions that were asked in the second video in this section can also be done using sine and cosine. I could give you this prompt. I could say, suppose t is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So that's telling us that this angle 
leaves us in the second quadrant, and that the sine of t equals four fifths. Remember the sine of t is referring to the y coordinate, so this is really just saying there's a point on the unit circle whose y coordinate is four fifths, I don't know, somewhere up here maybe, and I'm supposed to find its x coordinate, the cosine of t. Well, because this is a point on the unit circle, I know its x coordinate squared plus its y coordinate squared must be equal to one, and because the sine of t equals four fifths, I know its y coordinate is four fifths, so all I have to do is solve this equation for x, because x will be the cosine of this angle t. This is easy enough to solve. 4 fifths squared is 16 20 fifths. And when I take 1 and subtract 16 20 fifths, I get 9 20 fifths. So x is plus or minus the square root of 9 20 fifths, which works out really nicely. The square root of 9 is just 3, and the square root of 25 is just 5. What is it? Well, because t is between 90 and 180 degrees, and my x coordinate is negative. So x must be negative 3 fifths. In other words, the cosine of t is equal to negative 3 fifths. The point that I want to get at here is we never figure out what t is equal to. We don't know what angle will get us to the point in the second quadrant with the y coordinate of 4 fifths. We don't know that. This isn't one of the special points on our unit circle. But that's OK. The fact that it's on our unit circle allows us to figure out the x coordinate from the y coordinate. If we know that this is 4 fifths, we can figure out that this is negative 3 fifths. And if we know this is negative 3 fifths, we know that the cosine of t is negative 3 fifths. Before ending this video, a couple of notational things. This box here, where we kind of define the sine and the cosine functions, and we say that they return the y and the x coordinates of a point on the unit circle respectively, is sometimes captured with this shorthand. Sine of t equals y, cosine of t equals x. And along those same lines, this equation, which was the equation of the unit circle, we can change the x into cosine of t and the y into sine of t to kind of come up with a new equation of the unit circle. Cosine t squared plus sine t squared equals 1. This is important enough mathematically that it gets a fancy name. It's called the Pythagorean identity. And you're like, Pythagorean, I've heard that before. That's like the a squared plus b squared equals c squared thing, right? Yeah, this is actually that same fact kind of in disguise. And you're like, no way, that deals with triangles, right triangles specifically. And this is talking about circles. It's completely unrelated. What we'll see later on in this class is it's in fact the exact same thing. One more comment. Mathematicians like to be able to write this without parentheses. And you might be like, all right, fine, just drop the parentheses. But there's a problem. If these parentheses are all gone, the reader might think that it, the t is being squared. That t, the angle that I am putting into this function cosine, is being squared. So that there's no ambiguity, even though I think it's horrible notation. When we want to square the output of the function, the cosine of t, the x-coordinate on the unit circle, typically you put the squared here over the cosine part, not over the t. This is the standard way the Pythagorean identity is written. This is not how you'll see it written. And the reason is just laziness. We want to be able to write this without parentheses, but we don't want there to be any ambiguity on what's being squared, on whether the input of the function, the t, is being squared, or the output of the function, the cosine of t, the x-coordinate on the unit circle, is being squared. However, this notation makes students think that cosine all by itself means something, that this is somehow meaningful in math. And it's not. You can't square cosine. Cosine is a function, and it's only the output of that function that you can square. So when you see this, think this. The last thing on notation is if we go all the way back up to our unit circle here, instead of just memorizing that the x coordinate is the cosine of the angle t and the y coordinate is the sine of the angle t, often up in the corner of your unit circle, you'll see somebody write cosine t sine t as a coordinate pair. And this is just meant to remind the reader that when I write one half here, really what I'm saying is the cosine of the angle t, t being 60 degrees that corresponds with this point, is equal to this one half. So by adding this, we kind of encode more information into our unit circle. That's it.